Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about a FortiGate 60F and why they're awesome. So the FortiGate 60F is one of the newer chipset firewalls that came out. It was actually one of the first F-series firewalls that came out. And if you are familiar with E-series, 60 is basically your go-to for small business. Um, if it's a branch office, you could generally get away with the 30 E's, but you were going to want to put a 60 E where your servers are, Active Directory, DNS, anything that you're hosting internally. So the F-series came out, and it's a massive upgrade in the chipset. Um, so this one's using a SOC 4 chipset. And today we're just going to go over the basics of it, right? So, you know, you've got your standard console port. And then you've got two WAN ports. And you've also got a DMZ port, a dedicated DMZ port. And in the F series, they're actually creating dedicated interfaces for the portal link. So it comes out of the box with these by default. And they're not numbered. So if you look at this, it says A and B. Um, and those are the dedicated portal link interfaces. And then in addition, in addition to that, it has uh, five Ethernet interfaces. Uh, so the key things that are really interesting with this is the dedicated DMZ port, two WAN ports, and then the two portal link ports. So this is pretty redundant for a single unit. And if you are hosting Active Directory VPN services um, or anything, this is definitely going to be the model that you want to choose for your HQ. Um, if you're going for smaller branch offices, the 40F is a good replacement for the 30E. Um, and then an additional, there, I think we're at the 80 or 90F is what they released. Um, and then when you start branching from the uh, entry-level firewalls to the mid-size firewalls, the 100 and 200F are going to be your go-tos. Uh, so getting back to the 60F, um, the chipset is a major, major upgrade. Um, so the link speed is going to be one gig. You've got Ethernet interfaces, so you're limited to Ethernet. Um, if you want fiber optic, you've got to go to the 100F series. Uh, the chip in here is a SOC 4. And if you compare the 60E to the 60F, the SOC 4 chip is just a huge, huge upgrade. You'll notice massive performance increases when you compare equivalent numbers of, um, of an E model versus an F model. So if you compare the 60E to the 60F or the 100E to the 100F, pay a little bit more money and you get a lot more performance. Uh, performance in this one, if we look at raw throughput, that's going to be with no security. So if you just have an open any any policy, you're going to be able to get 10 gigabits per second through this firewall. If you just put IPS on it, so sometimes you're going to use these firewalls just for intrusion prevention, you're going to be able to get 1.4 gigabits per second through it on uh, intrusion prevention. If you're doing next generation firewall, which is kind of a mix of some of the security profiles, um, we can link that and go over the specifics of what's included in that. Um, or you can just look at the 60F data sheet, and I'll link that down below. There's a little star next to it, and then down at the bottom it explains what's included in the NGFW throughput. But that's going to be one gigabit per second. Now, if you turn every single thing on this firewall on, you're going to be getting 700 megabits per second. Most businesses aren't going to have more than 700 megabits per second internet connection. Maybe they have a gig, um, but you're actually going to mix and match some of these le levels in your policy table. So you're going to get a, a little bit in between the minimum and the maximum. So let's say your high, super critical stuff, you're going to put all the threat protection on. But then like 50% of your traffic is sanctioned that maybe it just has IPS or maybe it doesn't really need any security profiling because, you know, maybe it's exempt, right? Um, so depending on the traffic load, you're going to land somewhere in between here. Now, the, the main things that these are used for is SSL VPN and IPsec VPNs. So this model supports 200 SSL VPN users concurrently, and it has 900 megabits per second throughput over the SSL VPN. Uh, the IPsec tunnels, it can support 200 IPsec tunnels. And the throughput on the IPsec tunnels is actually 6.5 gigabits per second. So it's pretty, pretty awesome. Um, and then, you know, you're going to use this primarily in an instance where you want redundancy. So maybe you have dual ISPs. Uh, maybe you want redundancy downstream to your switch stack. 
whatever the case may be, this model out of the box comes with default interfaces both ways. You can set up the SD-WAN, you can have a cable backup uh, ISP provider, and then you can have a primary ISP provider, and you can set up the SD-WAN rules to filter traffic accordingly and send it out the appropriate WAN limit. Um, so when you're tying these in, I would definitely use the 60 for your main one, possibly whatever it is, the 80 or 90 that has the F model now, if there's a little bit more load on there. I've run these firewalls in offices that support, you know, 50, 75 users. Net, like the F series, the hardware doesn't even flinch. The load on it's like 40% memory, you know, low 10% CPU usage during the business day when everything's going on. So these are definitely solid, solid firewalls. These are my go-to for any small office environment. If, you know, when we start getting to the point where we're reaching like 200 users, 300 users, I'm going to start looking at the 100 and 200 F series. Um, but I'd say this probably will, the 60 F is going to cover probably about 80 to 90 percent of your use cases. And then in the instance where you do have a bigger data center at headquarters, these are great branch firewalls. So they're, then you're going to have redundant WAN even at your branch sites. So that's the 60F. What we're going to do is we're going to actually factory reset this and we're going to start building out um, a full network here. If you guys watch my previous videos, I got fiber last week. Um, we're going to be putting two ISP connections on this side. We're going to set up the SD-WAN and we're going to configure it according to my network standards. So stay tuned. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, hit that thumbs up on that video. It helps a lot. We're going to keep building this stuff out, so I look forward to seeing you in the next video.